Well, next I'd like to move on to uh, Martin Brickville, MMR. Uh, a couple of months ago, I talked to Martin and you all have seen Martin build uh, a lot of different car models on the show. And, you know, he talks about, uh, well, I, I got this part from here and then I went over and got this out of the box and got this out of another box and, and I did the underbody detail and then I did this and this and this. Well, I know a lot of people I know have, have always had trouble with understanding what is underbody detail, why it should be modeled, how to model, and what parts do you have to buy? What parts can you make? So Martin and I talked and I said, Martin, how about just doing a couple of shows about nothing but underbody detail and just show us exactly what underbody detail is and how you make underbody detail on one of your cars. So here is Martin Breckbill. Martin, I appreciate you doing this. Okay, let's see if we can get this to work. That looks right so far. Okay, well, as Jim described, he's got me into trouble again. <clears throat> rumpf, a rumpf. Uh, so tonight we're going to look at underbody. But in, oh, more specifically, I, I, I did trust rod systems a couple of, gosh, two years ago. I don't remember how long ago that was. I'm going to have to resurrect that set of slides. But uh, talk about brake systems. Now, I, I know, I can't remember his name, the S-Scale guy went several weeks describing underbody details and passenger cars and brake systems in the prototypes. But, you know, if you're going to install some of this stuff in your models, well, you're never going to put 100% of it there to start with. It's just not going to happen. It's not, unless you're, unmedicated, uh, obsessive compulsive people and, and work on and build one model in your lifetime. Uh, this is this is more of a uh, slim down a little bit, uh, more a, a readily achievable level of what can be done. <clears throat> Fair warning, it's O scale. So I'm going to give you names of places to get stuff, which HO, well, I, I understand uh, Tishi makes a nice K brakes set of parts in plastic. So there's your plastic parts, I guess. Uh, you want brass, I guess. I, uh, maybe precision scale still makes such stuff. Okay, so what are we talking about? Let's go back to 1949. Gosh, this is hardly a new thing. Um, this might have been one of Jim's articles from 1949. Let's see. Uh, so... Um, there's your diagram. This is the basic diagram. We got a, a K brake cylinder. We got some levers. We got some connecting rods. We got the train line. Pretty straightforward. Uh, we get the hopper cars. It's a little different because you don't have any space here to put them. So it, it's a K brake that gets broken into, into two pieces. So it's a split K brake. And you know, the, your train line actually runs outside here because, again, there's no place to put stuff in between. All you need is one connecting rod that runs down the middle. You have plenty of room. This works well for almost every car you'd ever want to build. I'm, I'm, there are a few exceptions, obviously. There will always be exceptions. And as you can tell, there are as many variations on the theme as you can find. You know, you look under prototypes, models, drawings, kits, prototypes, you will find something different every time. I mean, so if you worry about it and obsess about, oh, did I get everything in the right place? Gosh, um, unless you're, you've got an actual photo of the prototype, you can probably put it almost anywhere. <clears throat> that, that makes rational sense within the scope of uh, a choice of drawings. So you have, you have options. I mean, here's, here's the right out of the precision scale catalog. This is their drawing. That's their variation. But you can see uh, the Northwestern Short Line Gazette had all these different plans. These are fairly similar, give or take a little bit. Here's a K-brake system from a, uh, a Philadelphia Reading gondola. It's a little different yet. 
Here's a split K brake system for a, a coffin pickle car. That's got a uh, solid uh, center sill. A lot of fun to run your rods through. Uh, unless you know a machinist who can uh, drill holes through stuff for you. But there's lots of different versions. There's the split K brake system I did for that uh, Leadville Designs maintenance away cart kit. That was what, a year ago? Give or take a, give or take a century. But there's another variation. And there's a, if you want to ask about cabooses, because you're going to have a brake wheel at each end, possibly, not necessarily, but very possible. Okay, so yes, you can have the same K brake. All you do now is have, you just got an extra set of linkages from the other end and an extra lever. It's not a big deal. You just got to squeeze it all under there and get it all wrapped around things. That's where it gets more fun. Okay, parts. Well, you gotta have K brake casting. Okay, Grant Line used to make brass ones. They don't anymore, they haven't for years. It's one of my precious, my precious brass type K Westinghouse brake cylinders from Grant Line. Uh, $4 you wish if you could find one. If you ever see them for $4, buy every single one you see and, and tell me and send them all to me right away. Uh, and that'll never happen again. Wiseman, well, you, know, you know the name Wiseman. He's been on the show. He did one of the Thursday night shows, I think, in fact. He sells at least two, two or three, three different versions of K-brakes. Two of them in brass, one of them in white metal. This is particularly interesting, these two, because you can actually drill out this T in the brass and run your train line through it. It takes a little bit of planning and thought and uh, maybe some suffering. Um, and if you're not careful, maybe you'll, you'll put a, a number uh, a 30, yeah, 33 thousandths drill bit through your forefinger, which I did last week, which or two weeks ago, which uh, leads to colorful language and uh, 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 some bloodletting. Uh, 3D printing. They're available off of uh, Shapeways and various other sources. They are not hard to find. And of course, here's the very nice precision scale one. Uh, these, you might notice, they come with the uh, clevis on the rod. Some are more useful than others. The white metal ones, I remove them and, and add my own in brass wire because the white metal ones don't hold up, hold up well to anything. They, uh, they bend, break, snap, gone. So oh, there's, there's a couple of sources. So here's your basic car frame. Got, I've already put the train line in through the end sill, through the center, runs down the outside here. Underneath the, the uh, needle beams is a union joint here because it's a little tricky doing this sometimes. Oh, and also because this is a the T-sheet wire and the uh, short T-sheet wire doesn't run the distance of one of my cars. So you got to make a joint. No big deal. And we're going to use a grant line K break. I'm going to sacrifice my precious show. <clears throat> Wait till Jim gets the bill. <clears throat> That's what you're getting out of the bag. This monstrous sprue. It's got this rod with a clevis on it. Uh, you know, pretty much useless because it, it, it's so thin. And this is actually, the casting is actually filled. So you got to take something through there to open it up. You can either use a razor saw or your Dremel. Either way it goes, you're probably not gonna succeed and it's probably gonna make a mess and you'll probably end up cutting yourself. So I throw those away. Uh, these come in, and the styrene ones from Grant Line now, they are a kit. They're actually several pieces and you have to put them together. Loads of fun. More colorful language. And uh, styrene glue is uh, what you need, lots of. So it's taken apart, free from the sprue, clean it up. Uh, this is a Dremel and belt sander and gone. Uh, uh, no big deal. Get it cleaned up, nice and flat and clean. Okay, here's an important point. This tank actually sits slightly below the two support pieces. So you can't just plop this down on a flat surface. You got to have a hole for the tank to sit through. 
a little tricky. So the air tank portion sits below your supports. We're just going to put this clevis over in a, in a box somewhere and miscellaneous parts and uh, probably lose it or drop it on the floor. And I'll find it later when I'm not wearing shoes. So we need some supports, a couple of pieces of wood, match this, match that piece, match these to this. It drops right into place. And it's mounted. That was easy. But let's back up for a second before I forget. There's a hole in the end of this. And I actually drill that out to make sure it's going to hit the wire. It'll accept the wire cleanly. Because once it's in place and trying to drill it is, is no fun. And you want to make sure the wire fits the first time. Well, maybe the second. But pre-drilling things is important. So thinking ahead, getting it right, uh, avoids pain later or ripping it off later and drilling it, which is also painful and usually associated again with more colorful language. Okay, so it's in. I mount this with uh, a little bit of goo and some CA. Once it's in place, it doesn't come back off. Uh, the little black dots here, they're not holes, they're black dots. That's where the queen posts go for the truss rods. It's good to know where those go now because you have to figure out where all the brake parts go. And two objects have a very difficult time occupying the same space. So you want to avoid that. Um, and usually that results in uh, nuclear force problems that you don't want to involve yourselves with in this universe. <clears throat> okay, rest of the parts. Wire. Boy, that's, that, that, was, that was obvious. Wire. Turnbuckles. Okay, we're going to use plastic turnbuckles. Grant line, number 54s. Uh, okay, lever hangers, precision scale, but you can make your own. You make your own out of 15 by 60 thousandths brass, flat brass stock from uh, Detail Associates. Works just fine. And in a future show, I'll show you that. Uh, brake levers. These are some of the most precious things I have because I know Berkshire Valley doesn't make them anymore and won't make them anymore, despite my pleading and whining and hand wringing and attempted bribery and even offers to buy the molds. They won't do it uh, so far. Hope springs eternal, as they sometimes say. Uh, you can also get levers from uh, Scale City Designs, also white metal, a little bit different shape. You can just make your own out of styrene. This is not a big deal. It's 15, 20,000 styrene. File it down, snip it down with a pair of scissors, file it. No big deal. Okay. Okay, so there we are. We're going to make up the plumbing, as I like to call it. Rods and clevises. This is what you use grant, use grant line uh, turnbuckles for. A little bit of wire inside. That goes slides in, it's 25 thousandths wire. I dip the wire in goo, slide it in here, put a drop of C, a little bit of CA on it, pull it back until it's flush from the interior. It's not coming apart. Now you can just cut it off right here. You can see where I cut off the other two. Cut it off right there. Now you have a clevis on a wire right there. And now you can start putting things together. So, how do you do this? Well, you got to measure some wire, make sure it's not too long, glue it to your brake levers, slide it into this clevis, slide the piece over this, slide this one in, goo and CA, make this one. I'm going to put this one over here so it sits a little bit almost on top of this beam because the uh, brake hanger is going to hook that little hole right there and I'll support that. And I think that's almost clear. Scream if it's not clear. You know. Okay, brake hangers, lever hangers. These are the ones from Precision Scale. They make two different types. And, it's, and they're in the same bag together. So you, you sort of get some, you got a mix. Um, little holes, these, actually these bolts, actually have, there's actually bolts on the other side. So you can actually mark this Drill a hole, push them in, a little bit of extra strength, a little bit of goo, a little CA, put it in, test fit it two or three times, glue it all up, 
brake hanger. This one actually straddles over onto the needle beam, which sits right next to the queen post, but that's, that sometimes happens because I didn't, should have moved this down just a little bit further. Oh, well, next time I'll get it right. It'll be close enough and no one will actually notice it, but particularly after I put a coat of paint on it. Here's something else. There's a little bit of, you can draw a little bit of, a, there's a little dimple on the back of these things, these castings, and that's for hooking it into the train line. This make this gets fun uh, because you have to insert it in here, get it over here, make a right, make a left turn, make a turn down, and I make a loop at the on, very tiny little loop. It hooks onto this larger piece of phosphor bronze, squeeze it in there. Uh, this does, I guarantee you, lead to colorful language right away. Uh, but a hemostat and patience, and you can connect the things together. And if this wasn't a wood car, and if I were really, really, really good with a uh, soldering iron, I would have just soldered it together, this little linkage. But instead, it's, it's just a little bit of goo and some CA. And a little bit of uh, CA on the little tiny hole here. So you can actually connect it up to the train line. There's other... There's another line here that I never put in. It's a relief valve. You want to drill and you get another hole off the back of this and run a relief valve line off it. You can do that. I, I think that's, that, I, I've reached the point of uh, saturation on uh, accuracy for me here. This is uh, probably more than enough for most people. Okay, so I got three more of these cars to do and uh, all the truss rod stuff to do, but we're not going to do that here and now. Uh, I'm, well, I'm certainly not going to do it here. I'm going to do it in my shop, and you can do whatever you're going to do in your shop. But uh, I have no idea what these cars are going to be. I just uh, mass produce these things. And when I get an idea or see a picture, I suddenly realize, oh, yeah, that's what that one's going to be. We'll build that one. So I, I don't actually really sometimes have a target for what I'm building. But, okay, so that covers most house cars. And there's a diagram for hopper cars. I don't have a hopper car handy. But what about like say tank cars? Because they're kind of naked underneath. There's like nothing there except the center. There's, there's no platforms. There's nothing to attach stuff to. So everything has to come off that center sill. And particularly with a K brake. Now with AB brakes, you can hang parts off the other, uh, off the side walkways. Okay, so we got an IMP brass tank car. This is a Wiseman, one of the Wiseman uh, castings. And there's actually a T-joint down underneath here. You can just barely see a T-joint. And this wire, this phosphor bronze wire actually runs through the T, through this union and out the other side. So it actually threads all the way to one end of the other end. And it's integral to the K-brake. Underneath the K-brake, there's a piece of angle. And the angle was first now, the same notch that you saw, the same holes you saw on the wooden car to accept the K-brake. There's a hole in the angle right here. There's a little tab right here. There's a little surface right here. So that got soldered to the angle. Yeah, squid hard. You'll see it eventually. Uh, but there's a little angle. That was soldered to the center sill. Then the uh, K-brake casting was uh, buttered up with some solder underneath and then sweat soldered right onto the uh, angle. It dropped right into place. And as soon as it drops into place, you run away with the soldering torch as fast as you can because otherwise the whole thing's gonna fall apart. Uh, these are all soldered in place. I actually built the lever assemblies as two pieces and test fit. Where are these levers going to go? I didn't put the levers in and build it. I actually prefabbed it and had an idea where I was going. So I, I actually built the uh, pieces. I know where it's going to go. And these are just soldered in. So this is the, just the 15 thousandths by 60 thousandths brass angle, a brass uh, flat stock. And you just put a right angle, uh, a 90 degree twist in it. 90 degree twists are not hard to do. You just have to give enough of the flat stock room to twist. So you, you, try, you take two pairs of pliers and put them right next to each other and give it a 90 degree twist, it's going to break or it's going to tear. It's not going to do what you want to do. So a small pair of pliers up here, a large pair down here, but a gap 
of about 60 thousandths. Give it a right angle, you know, a 90 degree twist, and it'll work. It won't tear. Get, get them all in the same plane, get the, the two legs in the same plane, even and straight. Hold it in there with the hemostat. A little bit of flux and some solder and a torch, and a few seconds later, it's not going anywhere. So that's installing those parts. And just drop these things in. Well, that's easy to say because you can't drop it in. You got to wrap it around through in two pieces. So this is one piece right here. This piece, and these, one to the brake line, one to the uh, one to the uh, brakes of the uh, trucks, one to the uh, brake wheel. You just kind of pass it through here and pass it under and around the corner, and then back it up and snap it into the K brake casting. And this piece is a lot easier because there's only one brake hanger at this end. So you just push it in and put it on. Uh, drop a CA, drop a CA, and a little bit of goo and CA here and push it up onto that brake hanger and should be done. And a coat of paint later, that's what it looks like. And the coat of paint was last, sorry, Friday, Thursday, Friday. I don't remember. Whatever day it wasn't raining. And it was out in the driveway. So there's a, that's how you do a tank car. It's fairly easy, actually. It, it, it would seem terribly difficult, but a little bit of patience and you know, the ability to run your train line through it is, you know, okay, so you have to drill a hole here and drill a hole here. Uh, what did I use? Uh, 16th inch drill bit and a hand drill. I mean, it's, it's not rocket science. And the same story on the ends. It's a, there's a 16th inch hole. Actually, it's not a 16th inch hole. It's whatever uh, is passage for a 364th brass tubing, but it works fine. You can do this. And the real reason why you do this, of course, is if you turn your car upright and look at it, it doesn't have it doesn't have a, a the fatal disease of naked underbody syndrome, uh, which is a terrible thing for a freight car to have, and you should avoid it at all costs. I mean, I, yes, perhaps when you're looking down at the car, but you know a lot of layouts are a lot higher than waist high, and as you get older, you don't want to bend over and look at stuff. You want to just stand there and look at it straight ahead. So you know making your track 40 to 60 inches high is, is a lot more attractive. Next week, we'll do the AB, the AB brake. And uh, I'll, I'll go through the same process basically, although it may be a little shorter because you already know, I've already shown you how to do the, uh, the tricks with the uh, levers and clevises and, and uh, rods and all that fun stuff. You just adapt that to an AB brake system and uh, there's more plumbing between the, uh, the, the three components, but it's not hard. He says that lying to himself all the time. No, it, it is actually not that hard. Um, but I, I recommend uh, good tweezers and uh, locking tweezers if you have them or hemostats. They are handy for manipulating uh, brass wire that you custom bend to go around corners a lot and don't wanna have flying off into space after you spend an hour making the piece of wire. And you don't want to find it later when you're barefoot in your shop either. So that hurts. It stings. You don't want to do that. So I'm done for this week, Jim. Um, I got one question for you. Yes, sir. When you were talking about the underbody detailing for the uh, tank car. Yeah. You said, and then I sweat solder this. Oh. What is sweat solder? Uh, Okay, in this case, what I did, I said, this casting was upside down in a clamp with a bunch of with flux under it. I heated that up and actually put a puddle of solder on the casting. So there was a, there was a, a film, a good healthy film of solder underneath this casting when I laid it on top of here and then you know, heating up this casting without heating anything else around it. So the flame from my torch is hitting this casting only. I am not touching anything else as much as possible. As soon as it's hot enough to melt that solder, that torch is off of it. 
you'll see, you can watch it move. You can watch it settle down smoothly into place. It's hot enough to melt the solder. It's hot enough to join. It's hot, it now you're done. You don't need that torch anymore. Get it away from everything as fast as possible. Because if you let it sit there about another two seconds, maybe three, that angle, that piece of brass angle that's soldered to the center sill is going to fall off. So it's, you want it just hot enough. It all sweats together. You're done. That's it. Thank you so much. I just didn't know whether everybody understood what sweat soldering was all about. No, it's a fair question. Um, you know, I, I, my, my soldering skills are, I, I describe them as adequate. I, 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 I work, work up to a adequate. And if I get to where I want to be, that's, I stop, you know, because I, I, I'm not in the league of uh, some of the great modelers. I mean, I can think of a guy who used to publish in O scale trains. It was Tom Mix. Yeah. Who you would what, look at his articles on the machining work and the soldering work. And I'm guessing what half a dozen to a dozen people in the country were of that level. I mean, it was beyond comprehension as to being achievable. If I get, if I can get my stuff to work, that that's, that, I'll stop there. That's stop right there. And I think that's good enough for most people. Yep. I agree. Any other Mark, questions? I, re I really do appreciate you doing this. Does anybody have any questions for Mark? Yeah. Uh, Martin. Jim. Oh, go ahead. Jim, this is Mark Lachey in Dallas. Uh, yeah. Martin, you mentioned using a combination of goo uh -huh. and ACC when you were attaching the clevis yep. to the uh, phosphor bronze. Could you explain that a little bit more and the logic behind that or the thinking behind it? Oh, God. Okay, this goes back 10, 12 years, more. more it's actually more than that. Uh, this is something I, I, I had stumbled across. There's no logic behind it. It was desperation driven um i was i was attaching two things that had nothing to do with each other in material uh it was metal and wood small irregular shaped piece of metal to a piece of wood and trying every type of glue i could get that would make sense and even you know ca didn't work goo it by itself didn't work and i said heck try them both what the heck what do i got to lose at this point it's not gonna nothing's working anyhow except epoxy i didn't want to go down that road and it turned out about 10 seconds after I put them together, I couldn't get them apart. And I found that this works. There's something, I don't know if it's a catalyst, an interaction, a chemical one. Or I'm not an adhesives chemist. I'm a chemist, but I'm not that toward, that's not my area of expertise. Uh, and I wrote about this in one of my columns in O-Scale Trains and uh, Joe Giovanario came back to me and said, what are you nuts or crazy? I mean, that's nuts. That can't work. I said, try it. And he came back a couple of days later and said, it works. Why? I said, I have no idea. Uh, John Sethian had the same experience, really, you know, pretty well known, uh, good O scale modeler. And he has his own thoughts on the uh, science behind it being an engineer. So it seems to be a very nice way to connect dissimilar materials together, particularly if one of them is wood and it's end grain of wood. So I think it just gets into the uh, porous surfaces with the goo, latches on, and then gives it a, a good anchor for the CA to bind into. But it's a very rapid and very strong bond. But that just doesn't apply to O scale, Martin, right? That, that could be any scale. Oh, I use, I've used this to fix furniture. I've used it to do all kinds of things. Yeah, uh, ceramics, uh, all kinds of weird stuff. And um, I fixed one of my, I fixed my ex boss's clock doing that. He was wondering, "What the heck are you doing?" I'm like, "Well, this works. I know it'll work." Okay, Martin, may I make a suggestion? Oh, uh, sure. I've stumbled across something recently. It's called DAP DAP yep. Rapid Fuse Glue. Okay. Um. I think it may have some similar properties. I'm just guessing, uh, but I've been using it to uh, uh, attach Delrin truck pieces Ooh. together. You can get and, stuff to stick to Delrin. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's gold. And I've had good success with that, but it's DAP 
yep. rapid fuse. You can get it um, at Home Depot. And of course, you can get it online, but uh, you might consider that um, right. as a, because it's a it's kind of a one shot deal. You don't have to mix oh. the the Walters goo with uh, ACC. It well, all comes together. Oh well, yeah, when I when I say mix, I'm putting it all one on one surface, one on the other surface, and slap it together. Yeah, understood. Okay, well, some may not have, but this is interesting. Uh, uh, any any more adhesives in our arsenal are welcome. You know. Uh, Anything that works better and easier, why not? You I'll have to get some. I mean, I was, I, I was just at Home Depot this morning. Ah, uh, well, well I, I need reason. some electrical. I need some electrical supplies. I'll be back tomorrow. There you go. There was right. another question. Printing Shapeway. You can get it off of Shapeways. You know the uh, so you know the main the main piece the most complicated piece is the is the uh, is, is the K-break casting itself. And if you get that and it's got a, and if I don't know what they look like, because I haven't really looked at the one I have, but you've got your uh, places to drill and it's just compared to brass, it's a lot softer to drill. Mm -hmm. Okay, Yeah, you're not going to be soldering it, but okay, not everything needs to be soldered. That's not the holy grail or anything to solder everything. Uh, I mix materials and mix assembly methods all the time. I don't, I don't worry about it. I'm not, I'm not married to any particular method, but yeah, uh, the levers, but well, you can make those. They're easy. I mean, that, that's styrene. Uh, mm -hmm. These are, uh, this, this, these levers in the, in the tank car, I'm not even sure who made those, um, but they're just white metal. So the scale city designs ones, they're fine. And, and Grand Line makes, actually does make um, brake levers, though they're kind of prefabbed with, locations for the clevises and you have to drill them out so they're they're mm -hmm. actually more annoying to use than i think they're worth <laughs> so just a piece of styrene works you know round around the ends and you're done yep all right thank you yep. in fact mark correct me if i'm wrong except for the k-brake system k-brake piece itself the rest of it's easy to make i mean it's, it's just it's wire and and uh Cutting a few pieces of, of, uh, of material, it's no big deal. Yeah, it really isn't a complicated thing. It's wire. Okay, so this this union joint here, that's some three sixty fourths brass tubing to, to join wire together. Yeah. I, okay, so you're getting into smaller scales. I don't know what you use, but you probably don't have to join it together because it's going to be in an HO. What's it going to be? Fifteen thousands wire. You're not oh. going to see it anywhere. You're not really going to see it anywhere. Well, you can get it there and you can wrap it around. You'll feel good about it if you do it because you'll, you'll know it's there. Yeah, but, you know. Yeah, but it'll bend easy. It'll go right, it'll wrap right around stuff. And since the car is half as long, the wire will make the distance without having to put a joint in it. Anything hey, else? Martin, thank you so much. I really All right.